Tonight we are getting new insight into the enormous task of bringing January 6th rioters to justice. Ben Briscoe talked with the top prosecutor who launched the probe, sharing how his department has tackled the largest federal criminal investigation in U.S. history, leading in part to suspects right here in the triad. It was important for us to move quickly to charge a good number of cases to instill in the public that the rule of law worked. Michael Sherwin, then the Justice Department's top prosecutor in the District of Columbia, launched the Capitol riots investigation. Within 10 weeks, we're talking about, I think, close to 1,000 search warrants, 13, 1,500 grand jury subpoenas, three fifty to 400 arrest warrants, so just a number unseen before in any probably federal district in history. It didn't matter if you were a speaker that day or if you were a congressman, if you were in the executive office, the president, or if you were just one of the vendors selling popcorn that day. If your conduct fit the crime, we had the evidence, you were charged. Since that day, prosecutors charged six suspects from the triad. Laura Steele is a former High Point police officer out on pre-trial release. Matthew Wood also out on pre-trial release after being arrested in Winston-Salem. Chris Spencer from Pilot Mountain is also out on pre-trial release after investigators say he brought his 14-year-old son into the Capitol during the insurrection. His wife, Virginia, pled guilty to parading, demonstrating, or picketing in the Capitol building, with the DOJ recommending she get three months in prison and three years probation. Anthony Scarissa also pled guilty to the same charge. The DOJ has not made a recommendation yet on how long he should serve in prison. Only one of the six triad suspects is currently behind bars. Charles Donahoe from Forsyth County. Investigators say he is a known member of the Proud Boys and his charges are steeper because of that. These six suspects, part of more than 725 defendants arrested nationwide. The vast majority charged with entering or remaining in a restricted federal building or grounds. About 40 defendants from militia groups, including Oath Keepers, Three Percenters, and Proud Boys, face more serious conspiracy charges. At least five pled guilty. The great bulk of those individuals were these one-offs. They made terrible decisions. This wasn't something that was pre-baked and planned. And then you have a sliver of cases, we'll call the militia type cases, where there appeared to be a more collective planning. The votes for President of the United States are as follows. During the evening of January 6th, as Vice President Mike Pence went back and certified the Electoral College. We initially had a command post set up that evening at the Capitol Police headquarters, where we had to set up an architecture to handle these cases because there was no roadmap. From a mobile FBI command center, thousands of hours of social media and security camera footage collected, often reviewed minute by minute. We set up crews to look at body-worn camera footage and videos to try to identify who those people were, identify, fix, find them, and then get arrest warrants on them. Prosecutors say 140 police officers were assaulted that day. To date, 75 defendants face charges. Approximately 165 individuals pled guilty. Among them, the so-called QAnon shaman Adam Johnson and Robert Scott Palmer, who pled guilty to assaulting officers with a dangerous weapon. He was sentenced to more than five years in prison, the toughest sentence yet. The FBI is still asking for the public's help to identify the pipe bomber who left viable devices at the Republican and Democratic Party headquarters. And another 350 believed to have committed violent acts on Capitol ground. It would not surprise me if there's cases charged in 2022 or 2023. So the investigation is a long way from over. While the Justice Department has brought a range of charges, including conspiracy and obstruction, it has stopped just short of sedition among the most serious crimes.